I was on a shoot in Johannesburg a couple months ago, and this little girl, maybe like six or seven, she comes up to me and she asks me if she can make a movie. And, you know, being the supportive person I like to think I am, um, I take out this very powerful tool I have in my pocket and I say, yes, of course. And this girl has a vision, okay? She knows what she wants. Very quickly, she starts kind of moving around my hands and she starts, you know, pushing around the actors. And despite the fact that I very much respect that she has a vision, I notice she's doing something a little bit wrong. So I just tell her, I say, if you want to make movies, if you want to be a director, the most powerful thing that you have at your disposal is your words. It was simple, it was easy. Just use your words. And within 15 minutes of that moment, she was describing shots that I still have trouble describing to people I'm working with. And it was kind of this amazing thing. It was one of those moments that if you're a creator or a filmmaker, you are constantly chasing. And it was one of those moments that if you were an educator, you were constantly trying to create. It was that moment where an experience becomes an opportunity to develop knowledge. And, and my thing that I've kind of been feeling recently is that our current educational systems aren't filled up with enough of those moments. I think that the education system is great. I mean, I, I have to, you know, commend it a little bit, right? I'm going to give you a bit of a systemic analysis <laughs> of this institution that I am a part of, and quite honestly, I wouldn't be able to do that if I hadn't gone to university. So I have to give it credit there. Where I think these systems fail is the kind of learning and the kind of access we give students. So I think we need to do a couple things. I think the first thing that we need to do is expand the toolkit available for people when they want to express or explore or critique an idea. We want that kind of critical analysis that I get to engage in through speaking, we want that to be done through a myriad of different mediums. That means photography, that means video, that means graphic design, that means audio, that means, you know, it's uncountable, really. I don't know, I could, but that'd be boring. I, um, I think that we need to do this for two very key reasons. The first thing is that communicating through, you know, words and speech is awesome, uh, as I, you know, deliver this speech that I wrote to you. Um, but I think that the communication that's happening in the 21st century is not tied to those mediums. I think that the formal limits that we placed on academic expression were placed there 2,000 years ago. And we haven't kept up, we haven't adapted. There are so many other tools, they are way more accessible than ever. And if we actually want to empower young people to change discourses, to create innovations, to genuinely live up to dealing with the problems that are currently in front of them, we need to empower them with the tools that will actually get into people's heads, that will actually attach to people's feelings and will inspire them and will help their points be proven and will tell their stories. The 21st century is a digital century and we need to empower young people with the tools that will actually help them navigate those discourses. And the second thing, which is kind of this awesome little upshot of empowering young innovators with relevant tools, is that when you expand the toolkit, you do this awesome thing. You help people find their passion and their competencies. You say, hey, here are a bunch of things. Try them out. See what works. See what makes you happy and what you are best at. And the little example I like to give is, is you start to think about someone like a photographer, you know? They never get to find out in our current educational system that they have a beautiful eye. 
And that crafting an argument or crafting a story through photography, through images, is much more fulfilling and much more effective than any time they have tried to do the same thing through words. It's not fair that someone never gets to discover that in our current institutions. And that's why we need to expand the toolkit, so that we can help people become more motivated students, so that they can take the knowledge that they actually acquire and change the world. Now, there's one kind of key thing here, which is when we are empowering people with these communicative and creative skills, you kind of need to adopt a different method of learning. I'm a filmmaker, and if there's one thing I can tell you, it's that the only times I have ever done great things or learned good things, I've just learned how to do it from doing it. It's this thing that you just keep on getting told when you're an artist. You want to be an artist? Do it. Sorry. <laughs> and I think that that is the best way to learn if you're trying to be a creator. And so this is kind of the upshot of what I'm trying to get at. How do we provide the conditions so that people can learn and do? How do we create the landscape so that we provide more moments that are opportunities to create knowledge? So the first thing and I kind of already touched on it, is the tool set. Making sure that people are empowered. When I was the multimedia editor over at the you know, student paper, um, there was this girl who came into one of our workshops, and she wanted to do a piece about mental health. She wanted to explore her personal experience, and she wanted to explore the experience of a myriad of other McGill students. But she said, hey, I don't have a camera. And me, having recently done a little bit of fundraising, I was like, you know what? I have a camera. And I gave her the camera. And then she made a movie. She interviewed more than a dozen McGill students. She did something that felt cathartic to her, connected to thousands of people, and actually helped represent a reality that exists in university life. And all I needed to do was give her a camera. So that's the first thing. Empower people with the right tools. The second thing is to establish reasonable parameters. You know, when you see this creative process, when you see this like, you know, huge thing like, wow, oh my god, how do I learn all these things? It just creates decision paralysis. It's like, how do I go about this? How do I execute this? What is my goal? Providing a little bit of structure is not the same as didactic learning. It's just saying, hey, this is the space in which you can execute something. Right? This, is, this is the space in which you can operate so that it feels more doable, so that it feels more feasible. Um, and so that people aren't driven away, so that they don't recoil at the opportunity. Because we don't want that. We want it to seem manageable, and we want to structure the kind of obstacles that people face so that they know what kind of solutions they're going to need to develop. And then the third, empowering people creating parameters, and this one's a little bit more complicated, or at least like, requires a little bit of emotional intelligence, which, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think that what we need to do is attach learning to purpose by way of creativity, okay? And what I mean by that is, uh, I'll tell you a story. Again, when I was over the student paper, I remember we had, you know, 5,000 Facebook followers and we had a couple cameras. And I was like, you know what? These couple cameras, these 5,000 Facebook followers, this gives us the opportunity to share other people's stories, to bring out our own voices, to critique these institutions that every single day we are frustrated by. This is not just an opportunity to tell stories or to make movies. It is a responsibility to the community that we are a part of. And every single time when we take up that responsibility, when we make the movie, when we lift up the voice, when we critique the institution, we are actually creating a little tiny bit of a better world. And so I think that that's how you create this idea of excited accountability. Because learning through doing necessarily requires that you face obstacles. It's about finding the solutions to the problems. It's about learning how to overcome the obstacle, 
right? But sometimes when people see obstacles, they're just like, wow, geez, that's too much for me right now. But if you can connect that obstacle back to a purpose, whether that's an organization or a person or an idea that they really care about, they'll be more willing to drive forward, to overcome it, and to learn from it. And so, with these three things in mind, empowering people with the right tools, creating you know, salient and, and, and kind of helpful parameters, and motivating people with a sense of purpose or accountability or responsibility to a greater idea or organization or person, I kind of thought to myself, I was like, so how do we, how do we do that? And then over the last year or so, um, a couple brilliant people and I have been working on launching this little organization. And the premise of the organization is very, very simple. It's just do good for the do-gooders. Just create things for the people who are making the world a better place. It is just use our creative minds to help them tell their stories. And then provide an opportunity for those, for new people, for maybe someone who's never learned any of these skills before, to come onto these campaigns, to learn under the guidance of someone who knows what they're doing, to help another organization that's creating social impact tell their story and learn through that process, right? So that's what we're trying to do. It's this little grassroots kind of thing. If you want to learn, you know, meetings on Thursdays. Um, but I think that for me, with my media, there's, there's, there's one thing that kind of is hammered home. There's like a couple people from my media here, like we're shooting the thing. Um, thank you. I get a round of applause actually for these brilliant people. <laughs> these are my favorite people in the world, like genuinely. Um, and I think that they are the reason why any of this really matters at all. Because if the team that I get to work with every single day at my media is representative of the generation that I am a part of, if these people are the storytellers and the arguers and the inspirers and the vital innovators of the future, if this is my team going into this crazy, crazy set of decades that seems to be in front of me, then I'm excited. I trust them. They're amazing, but it doesn't always seem like they have the right tools to create the right impact. So let's start by empowering people, by creating the right parameters to learn, and by connecting their learning to purpose so that people can keep on doing great things and learn while doing it. Thank you.